You guys remember last year when that Greek TV show made fun of BTS, EXO, and Kang Daniel because they couldn't understand why those guys made it on TC Candler's 100 Most Handsome Faces list? Shoutouts to TC Candler, by the way. Oh, and this picture you're looking at from that show, if you're thinking, whoa, they even made those things just to make fun of them? No, that was the apology. Think about that. Ridiculous. Well, this year it happened again, but on a Polish TV show. The host on that show saw that Jungkook took the number one spot and said he doesn't look masculine, he looks like a little boy, they said he had pretty eyes, but then laughed about his dyed hair. I mean, I'm sure her hair is all natural. They also speculated that Jungkook won because of Asian fans taking over the votes, which tells me they don't really know how this list works. But it gets worse. They took pictures out to the streets to get random people's opinions, but they showed J-Hope's photo instead. You could have just printed the picture from the- oh, it's not that hard. Some of those people were saying things like, a man has to be a man, a woman a woman, you can't tell which one he is. And then one guy who saw him wearing earrings compared him to a cow because cows wear earrings. Alright, now I'm starting to get confused on what makes a man a man, a woman a woman, and a cow a cow. What is supposed to define a man, sir? You you want muscles? Should, should he have a beard? And I don't want anyone to demonize all the people in Poland. A lot of Polish people found it despicable, a lot of news outlets over there criticized that show and their hosts, who stood by their comments and chalked it up as preferences. Look, I don't think anyone is saying you have to think Jungkook is the most handsome man in the world. That's your opinion to have, that would be ridiculous to get mad over. But this belittling because he doesn't fit your outdated standards of what a man should be? That's what people have problems with. Eventually they gave in, apologized that their words were received a certain way, and if you read it, they really harp on how their words were received, which really gives you insight on what they really feel and their character. I would hope they've at least seen the artistry of BTS's performance of Black Swan on James Corden, but then again, they would probably think it's feminine. Men don't dance! James Corden, by the way, a man who has more talent in his stubble than these close-minded people, took care of not just the guys, but the fans waiting outside of his studio beyond what he was obligated to do. That's a man. Someone who made the boys feel comfortable. And my favorite part about this, aside from this beautiful hug between James and RM, I don't know why this hug stood out so much to me. But aside from that, my favorite part about this was fans being so appreciative of James Corden that they found one of James' tweet from a month ago about a charity he was passionate about and donated over 17,000 breakfasts for hungry children. I'm getting chills saying this, for real. As you can see, what goes around comes around. So it's funny on the other side of that coin when people put money into a billboard trying to get Chen out of EXO for damaging their image, it gets towed away for illegal parking. What goes around comes around. And that wasn't even the only moving truck billboard protest going on lately. Winner fans also pitched in for one requesting many things along with a comeback and more promotion before the guys have to enlist in the military. It was the same thing EXO fans were struggling with last year. YG actually responded by saying all the preparations are happening and going well as planned, Winner has concerts coming up and in between are working on new projects. And from people's response to YG's response, I think this is how YG's statement looked in fans' eyes. I, I don't care. <laughs> they were probably more worried about the reaction to their statement revealing they were still going to use some of the songs B.I. had a hand in producing, but cutting him out. They said it's because other producers worked on them as well, the members worked on them, so it would be a shame just to push those songs aside. Plus, they really didn't want to delay the comeback and have another billboard truck parked outside. Actually, I, I think they're cutting his parts. They were clear about that for one song, but didn't mention the others. It is confirmed though that he is credited as a composer for their title track. Seems like YG is just trying to juggle so many things and dig themselves out of so many holes. Maybe they need Rosé as the new CEO, I'm just saying. And maybe get her a new bodyguard as well. Somebody help me!